Hello. Hello. Welcome to Thursday Talk. Hello. Welcome. Scoot on chair again. To Thursday Talk. It's me. And Ella. Again. Mm-hmm. But this time it's Thursday. So Ella um, is going to be talking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I see Maureen is on already. Hello, Maureen. Uh, it's only let's see, there are three people on, but I see if, only Maureen. If has you're commented. on, please comment so we can see. Yes, that would be very nice if we could see you. Yes. Okay. So, how are you, Jeff? I'm doing very well. How are you? Well, I'm good. It's pretty hot out today. It sure is. Um, well, I think we should wait a few minutes, but, oh, hello, Linda. Linda's on, hello. As I was saying, wait a few minutes for other people to get on. It's only 12.01. Mm-hmm. So I hope everybody's doing good. I wonder if it's hot where you are. The sun's really beating over here. Mm-hmm. So if it's hot or cold, please tell us. Mm-hmm. And if you have any prayer requests, Please write them down so later we can pray for you. Yeah. <clears throat> so, 1201, what should we do now? I don't know, we can wait a few minutes for people to get on. Mm-hmm. Well, I think there are already three people, so. That's true. I guess we'll get started. Uh, Linda says 83 degrees and sunny over where she is. Yeah, it's going to be 85 here. I'm not sure what it is at the moment. But. Yeah, we were just weeding before and it got yeah. kind of hot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I think we should pray. Okay. We could pray. Would you pray for us? Uh, yes, I will pray. Okay, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this wonderful day and what you have given us, Lord. I thank you for that. I pray that you bless us today and protect us in all that we do, Lord. I give you the glory because you are worthy of it and more. So I praise your holy name. I ask you bless this Thursday talk and everyone on it that they would be healed and that they would be protected and they would be blessed. Give us words to speak and bless this Thursday talk today. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. 12.02. So today, we will be in the book of Luke. Mm -hmm. Luke 14, to be exact. Let's see. Let's go there. Man, should have put a bookmark in. We'll find it. Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Acts and Luke. Mark Zachariah. Okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Okay, Luke 14, which I think I should go ahead and read it. Okay. If you have your Bible, you can read along too. It's Luke 14, um, 25 to 33. And actually, 35. The cost of being a disciple, which says, Now great crowds accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, If anybody comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid all down the foundation and is not able to finish it, all who see it will begin to mock him, saying, This man began began to build and was not able to finish. Mm -hmm. Or what king going out to encounter another king in war would not first sit down and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to to meet him who comes against the 20,000? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any of you 
who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how can how shall it be how shall its saltiness be restored? It is of no use either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown away. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I don't know if that's part of it. Oh well. Twenty five to 33, but you can also read 34 and 35, which talks about salt without taste is worthless. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Four people on now. Oh, that's good. Beyond. Oh, uh, please comment. Normie and Ava. Hello. Hello, Hello Ava. Yes. Okay. Mommy. So, this is called, in my translation, which, let's see what the translation is. Hmm. The ESV. English Standard Version. English Standard Version. It is called The Cost of Discipleship. Let's see what Jack says. Mine says. It's mine's the modern English version. Modern English version. Mine's the English Standard Version. Let's see, it says. Okay. The cost of discipleship. No, oh, it says the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, probably other translations says a lot of different things. We'll not get into that. Okay. So, so this is talking about that there is a cost, a consequence of being a disciple. I have not really felt that consequence of being a disciple yet in my 13 years of life. Just because of where I live, really, who I live with, you know, I grew up in such a Christian lifestyle, and you did too, mm. that there wasn't a time that we didn't really have time for God. We just grew up like that. But I know during my life that I will lose friends because of my faith, or I will lose jobs, or I will lose the world. But I also have the knowledge that because I lost the world, I gained eternal life. Mm -hmm. Because I lost relationships with other people, I gained a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So be basically because I lost everything, the worldly stuff, I gained the heavenly stuff. And I have treasures in... I will have treasures in heaven. Yeah, I will. <laughs> well, this is in the future, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, Jerome Ellis Jr. I hope you're doing well. Yes. And Sandy Whitney. Hello. So nice. Five people on. Pretty good. And it's 1208. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in maybe in your life, in the future, or in the past, maybe, you lost a job. And it was a really good job, let's say. But the only fault about it was that it was on Sunday. Mm. And it would keep you from going to church. Well, sometimes that happens, but. Sometimes, if that's keeping us from our relationship with God, we have to push those things away because the Lord will provide. Mm -hmm. Even a lot of things in the world could keep you from having a relationship with God. And, it, and as it says, those who cannot hate all the things of the world, your money, your family, everything, your hobbies, everything, cannot become a disciple. Mm -hmm. And Jesus... Is not meaning hate everything no. that you have. Using a hyperbole here to basically hate represents love less. Yes. So mm -hmm. you can love your family and everything you do, but oh, Maureen says my video feed keeps starting and stopping. I was doing this yesterday with Wednesday night in the world. Oh, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you, it might be the weather we're having here in the Midwest. I'm staying on because I love listening to you can speak. Hmm. Well, thank you. Yes. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Mm. It might um, be because we're doing it on a different... Yeah, um, we are doing it on a different computer because Pop and Gigi are in New York and they took their computer to do Wednesday night work. But, but I'm not sure why it's doing it. But, um, 
Thanks for staying on anyway. Yeah, and you can watch it later if it's too bad. They um, might be like that later too, but... Well, we'll see. Anyways, as I was saying, but in those times, we have to remember why we pushed that away mm -hmm. and the price of doing it. It may not look like much now. We just lost a job. But in the future, it will be more than enough. So, let's think of some ways or things that can keep us from becoming a disciple, from being a disciple. Well, the first way is pride. Mm. Pride is a really big thing that can keep yes. you from what God wants. Mm -hmm. Thinking you know best. Sometimes we think that we are doing, we think we are doing the right thing, but we forget to check with the will of God. Mm. Just like last Tuesday you were talking about Saul. He thought he was doing the right thing by killing all of the Christians that believed in Jesus. Mm. But he didn't go to the word of God. He didn't check the will of God. He didn't ask God what he thought. So sometimes we forget to check with the will of God. Because maybe we are getting that job on Sunday. And we think, yeah, it's fine. I'm providing for my family, right? This is good. But really, could you get Philippians 4.19? 4, 4, mm -hmm. This is, goes with what I'm saying. So, back to the job thing. You have that job. And, yeah, I'm providing for my family. This is fine. This is good. Yeah, it's stopping my relationship with God, but I'm doing good because I'm providing for my family. But actually, Philippians, what? Philippians 4, 19. Philippians 4, 19 says, But my God shall supply your every need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Yeah, so this is saying that God will supply our every need, but according to his riches, which are endless. His riches are endless, so he'll never stop supplying mm. our needs. So, if that's stopping us from our relationship, maybe we have to think, well, the Lord will provide for me. Mm. So it's okay, the Lord will provide. So, could you also get James 4.10? Yes. C. James 4. Mm -hmm. We need to ten. let go of let go of pride and check with the will of God. It says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Yeah, so this is saying to humble ourselves, let go of pride and humble ourselves, and then he will lift us up. If we let go of our thinking that we could do it on our own, he will provide. Cool. Could you also get James 4, 6? Yes. James 4, 6 says, But he gives more grace. And for this reason, it says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Yes, it's saying God resists those who have pride, the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So when we become humble before God, he gives us grace. He gives us, a, he provides with grace so that we can have a second chance and we can keep going in life. So, Go get his will done. Mm -hmm. Could you also get Proverbs eleven two? So like James four eleven two. So like James four six. He gives us grace to the humble. So we need to let go of all of that. And sometimes that's really hard. And sometimes in my own life, I think I know best. I remember one time I was going to sew a skirt. Right? And there were two ways to do it. And mommy said, do it this way. But I really wanted to do it the other way, so I did it the other way. And after, it wasn't big enough. But And mommy knew that, and she tried to tell me, but I thought that I knew best. And I thought that, it'll be fine, I know this. I read the instructions, but mm -hmm. I should have listened to mommy. In the same way, we should listen to God. God knows best, we should check with the will of God. Proverbs 11.2 says, when pride comes, then comes shame. Yeah, so when pride comes, then comes shame. Just in that story, I had so much pride, but then I was shamed because I had no fabric left. 
to finish the skirt. So, and in the same way, we have so much pride in the world that afterwards we have shame. But the good news is that the Lord forgives us. And like James 4, 6, he gives us grace once we humble ourselves before God, before him. So that was the first way, pride. And the second way, family. Let's say um, your family is having a cookout on Sunday. You may think that's okay because the Bible tells us to love our family. But the Bible also says in Luke 14 that whoever can't put Jesus first cannot be his disciple. If we are, if we are.